We are continuing today to look at the I am's of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are currently looking at I am the door. And I have asked questions in these teachings or sessions. I have said the door to what? The door to the Father's house. The door in Egypt, the door to heaven. Jesus Christ is the door. And as I've said with the other things he declared of himself, the bread, the light, we could just continue on in the studies of these. And, and folks, that's what we're doing. We're studying who he is because who he is is our salvation. Our salvation is not just something he's done, but it's who he is. And when we get a hold of that, it's just the greatest life there is. It's, it's, it's beyond imagination. It goes into the scripture, I haven't seen, ear haven't heard, never entered into the heart of man, the things that God had prepared for them. And the Apostle Paul writes, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. And the things he's revealing are the things in Christ, the things in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Spirit of God is revealing in our hearts is who He is. And who He is is our salvation. Who He is is our life. You know, ultimately, as we look at these I am's of Jesus, I believe it's going to culminate in I am life because that's what He says He is. He, he says in the book of John, I have come that they may have life. And then He goes on to say, I am the resurrection and the life. So as we gather up what he is, looking at it in the scripture and praying that the spirit of God reveal it in our hearts, that, that not only do we see it in the scripture, but that what we see in the scripture becomes the very reality of our living in the earth, that the Christ of God would be revealed in us by the Holy Ghost, that we would know him and we would express him and we would see the glorious union that we have with him and we would share it with others that, that we would move from being a religious people to a Jesus people. I told a young man one time, he asked me uh, if I was a certain kind of preacher and I said, I'm no, I'm a Jesus man. I don't want to be labeled with really anything but him. I, I, I used to be. I used to want to declare I was this and I was that. But as I've come to know the Lord and really know him as my life, know him intimately, I don't want to be labeled with anything but the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now let's get on into the study. I, I believe I asked this question last week, but um, we've we've been three weeks in looking at I am the door, Jesus saying I'm the door to the sheepfold. And we've talked about the door that they entered into when they were in Egypt and how they entered in that door and then they came out of that door. And I again repeat, it was, I believe, direct relation to what Jesus says in the book of John 10. When he says he's the door of the sheepfold, that we would enter in, go in and out and find pasture. And they went in that door and that bloodstained door and they came out on their way to Canaan land in the reality of the new day. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. They came out in the reality of Passover, in the reality of the offering of the Lamb. And the reality of the death, burial, and resurrection, you could say, of the Lamb of God. And they came out in the light of the new day on their way to Canaan. 
And so today, as we begin to focus in this store, I want us to just refresh our minds. Last week, we were looking a lot at the door of the of the temple and of the tabernacle and how God had placed the veil in the t uh, temple and tabernacle and behind that veil, the presence of the Most High God dwelled in Israel. And Jesus rent that veil, Matthew 27, it tells you that the veil was rent from the top to the bottom when Jesus died. And what to me that means is there's access. It also means that's no longer in place. It was done. It was finished. But now there's access through the blood of the Lamb in what the old covenant high priest could not do. He could never give the comers there to, meaning the comers to that old covenant priesthood, that old covenant law, that old covenant temple. He could never give them access to the presence. But Jesus came and by one sacrifice, he granted access through him, that we now through him have access unto the Father. We have access unto the presence of the living God. And as this access is made real, the living God is made real to us. He, he becomes a God that's not far off, but he's a God that's in our midst, a God that dwells in our hearts and our minds, that's transforming us by the renewing of the word. It becomes a, a, a reality that if someone told me I was going to believe this or see this or know this 20 years ago or, or 25 years ago, now I may have believed it 20 years ago, but 25, 30 years ago, I would have probably told them no way. But folks, I, I, I do believe this. I do see this. I do hear this by the Spirit of God, that this God is real in his people. And we that are his have access. We have access in the most holy place in the presence of the most high God. What a place we do now dwell. Well, I want us to look, we began to look at this last week, and I want us to look at it in a little detail. And I, and I say a little because just what I'm going to present to you today could probably go on for months or maybe even years of searching the scripture, but we're going to present it today, and most likely we're going to move on next week in the I Am's of Jesus in another declaration he made. But in Mark 1, 9, it says, in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth, Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opening and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came out of the heavens, you are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. Glory to God. This picture, Jesus comes down to John. And the heavens open. They open up on him. The Spirit of God comes up on him. And a declaration is made from heaven. You are my son. This is a heavenly vision. This is a heavenly vision. We have to hear this. In Matthew 3, there's another account of this. In Matthew 3.13, it says, then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answering said, said to him, permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. After being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. And behold, a voice out of heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom, in whom I am well pleased. I repeat again, 
we have the heavens open. We have the Spirit of God descending. We have a declaration. This is my beloved Son. In whom God is pleased. Not just with whom. But God is pleased in him. And when we search the scripture, Jesus declares that the father that sent him was where? In him. He that sent me is with me, he said. He didn't leave me alone. In John 14, he said to his disciples, he said, Believest thou not that I am in the father? And the Father is in me. This is something to question. Do we believe that? Do we believe what Jesus said? That God was in Christ, Paul wrote, reconciling the world to himself. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Well, in Acts chapter 26, Paul is given an account to King Agrippa. And he says to him in verse 12, it's written in verse 12 anyway, it says, whereupon as I journeyed to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests at midday, O King, I saw on the way a light from heaven. Notice what he saw, a light. Who said they're the light? Jesus did. I'm the light of the world. He's the light of heaven and the light was above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them that journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice saying unto me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the goat. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And who were, was Paul persecuting? He wasn't persecuting the man, Jesus. He was persecuting the church, which is his body. I mean, there's so much to get a hold of in this heavenly vision. So what is heavenly? What do we see when the heavens are open? You know, our minds have, have been taught our hearts have been taught that when we see in the heavens, we're going to see our loved ones. And I'm not against you seeing your loved ones. We're going to see streets of gold. We're going to, we're going to see all these things of, of the natural. But I want you to see what Paul saw when heaven was open. When heaven was open from, for Paul, he saw a light. And this light he declared to be the Lord. And he asked, who is, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And he goes on to tell Paul, he says, but arise and stand up on thy feet, for to this end have I appeared unto thee, to appoint thee a minister and a witness, both of the things wherein thou hast seen me, and the things wherein I will appear unto thee, excuse me, delivering thee from delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I send thee to open their eyes that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive remission of sins and an inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith in me. Wherefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but declared both to them of Damascus first and at Jerusalem and throughout all the country of Judea, and also to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God, doing works worthy of repentance. For this cause, the Jews seized me in the temple and essayed to kill me. So, the Apostle Paul's vision, heavenly vision, appears to be Christ in the church. 
In another place, the Apostle Paul makes a statement or writes a statement. I determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. In the book of Revelation, which we, Lord willing, go turn there. In chapter 4, John sees the heavens open. And he's caught up in the spirit and he sees a throne. And if you read from John 4 to John 5, in John 4, of course, he sees one on the throne. And in John 5, or, or Revelation 5, excuse me, Revelation 4 and Revelation 5, if I said John 5, excuse me, but in Revelation 4, the heavens are open, and John's caught up into the spirit, and he sees a throne, and he sees one on the throne. And going into chapter 5, he sees a lamb having been slain in the midst of the throne. Now this lamb is standing, having authority, but he had the marks of one that had died, that had risen from the dead, and he, and he takes the book from him that sitting on the throne, and he opens the seals of the book. He opens I believe life, he opens the new covenant. And around the throne are those that are praising him for the redemption. And when you put this together in the scripture, the spirit of God, the spirit of the Lord puts it together in your heart. And you see it in the scripture, Paul sees a heavenly vision. And in the heavenly vision, the church is in that vision, because Jesus asked, why do you persecute me? Of course, Paul was persecuting the church. And Paul later would declare to the church that he determined to know nothing among them save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Then John sees Jesus Christ crucified, raised from the dead a lamb standing in the midst of the throne. <laughs> I mean, what a vision. That's the heavenly vision is seeing that that pertains to the lamb. And see, this is, this is what is declared in there in Matthew and Mark. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. When the heavens are open, that's what we see. We see the lamb, and we see that that pertains to him. We see what he's done. But we don't just see it. We get carried by the Spirit into it. John was carried by the Spirit in the book of Revelation. And he saw by the Spirit, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, and that's what we're doing. We're being carried by the Spirit, and we're seeing that of God. Before I turn there in Ezekiel chapter 1, Ezekiel chapter 1, the Bible reads, Now it came about in the 30th year on the fifth day of the fourth month while I was by the river Chabar among the exiles. The heavens were open, and I saw visions of God. What did he see? Visions of God. So what the door to heaven opens to us is visions of God. Jesus said, I am the door. This is how heaven's opened. It's opened up on him. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And we see that that pertains to him. Remember what Jesus says in one place. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen my father also. Now, we can associate that with him in the natural, and that's okay. But I believe he's speaking of the spirit. In one place, he said, the words I speak to you are spirit in their life. So when we see him by the spirit, we see that that is of God. We, we are seeing that of spirit. 
by seeing Christ. We're seeing that of heaven by seeing Christ. We're actually partaking of that of heaven by partaking of Christ because he's heavenly. He's heavenly. See, see, our ideas of heaven is just a place we go to, but Jesus is the heavenly one. He's the heavenly one. God is heavenly. The spirit of God is heavenly. It's not earthly. So if I'm born of the spirit of God, if I've been born again of the spirit of God, is that earthly? Or is that heavenly if I'm born of God? Would that not be heavenly to be born of God? I believe it is. I believe that's why Jesus told Nicodemus, if I tell you of earthly things and you believe not, how then, if I tell you of heavenly things, will you believe or will you understand? However he said it, because what's heavenly is that of the spirit. If I'm birthed of the spirit, that is heavenly. Because everything that pertains to God is heavenly. So if I know of the spirit, then that knowing is heavenly. That's a, that's a spiritual understanding. Well, well, wouldn't the spiritual understanding be heavenly? Sure it would. Now, I make a comment every now and then. What is greater, God or heaven? Something to think about. I believe God is. And I believe heavenly is that that pertains to him. And I believe we could say earthly pertains to Adam. And I believe we could say that scripturally. In 1 Corinthians 15, the Bible says the first man is Adam is of the earth earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And I'll read it exact. Verse start at verse 45, 1 Corinthians 15, 45 says, So also is written, the first man Adam became a living soul. The last Adam became a life-given spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, then the spiritual. The first man is from the earth, earthy. The second man is from heaven. As is the earthy, so also are those who are earthy. And as is the heavenly, so also are those who are heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So heavenly is defined by man. According to Paul, the second man is the Lord from heaven, and that that pertains to him is heavenly. So in Genesis 28, and I believe we read this last week, and, and I, I'm just going to Quoted, I may read a scripture or two here and then John 1, but Genesis 28 is the story of Jacob. And when he came to a certain place that I believe is called Bethel later on, he lays down and sleeps and he beholds a ladder set up on the earth that reached into heaven. And it says the angels of God ascended and descended on it. And Jehovah stood above it, declaring to him that he is Jehovah, the God of Abraham and of Isaac. And the land is the land that Jacob's seed, Abraham's seed, Isaac's seed is going to possess. And God declares he's with him. And Jacob awakes and he says, Jehovah is here, and I didn't know it. And he says, how dreadful is this place? This is none other than the house of God and the gate or the door of heaven. So 
he sees heaven open, so to speak. A ladder set up on, uh, on the earth, extending into heaven. And in John 1, 43, here, here I believe is the ladder. <laughs> it says, on the morrow, he was minded to go forth into Galilee and find a Philip, and Jesus said unto him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida of the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee underneath the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Thou shalt see greater things. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you shall see the heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. In, the, in Genesis, it's descending upon the ladder. In John, Jesus says, it's, the angels are ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And one place angels is referred to or interpreted as ministering spirits. Anyway, the ascending, I, I believe what Jesus was saying is, Nathaniel, you're going to see the heaven open on me, by me. I'm the door to heaven. And you're going to see a heavenly vision through me. And you yourself are going to ascend in me. You're going to see that of heaven, and you're going to declare that of heaven in the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I believe that's what he's declaring, folks. That we see through Christ the heavenly. Every time Christ is revealed in our hearts, that's heavenly. It's not earthly. And that's ascending by the Spirit, and seeing the heavenly things. That of Christ is the heavenly things. And the beautiful thing about having this treasure, as Paul says, in earthen vessels, is we can declare what we see by the Spirit of God into the earth. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now, I know what I'm saying is a whole lot different than what a lot of people say. A lot of people quote, a saying, I want to make heaven my home, and honey, I do too. <laughs> I'm all about that. But I don't think we have to wait to live in the heavenly realms of God. I really don't. I believe the Apostle Paul told, told us that in his word. He says in Ephesians 2 that we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is written by Paul. In Hebrews 12, it says, we've come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. It's just an understanding of what heavenly is, of what the heavens are. Isaiah declares, heaven is my throne. Jehovah declares this in Isaiah. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build me? And he says, there's a man he's looking to. And I believe in Isaiah, that word there is speaking of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ unto this man while I look. Because Jesus builds the house God was looking for. You are the temple of the living God. Christ is a son of his own house, who you are. It, I, mean, I mean, there's so many scriptures that declare this. So many scriptures that the Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter write about God inhabiting his people. 
that word, the habitation of the Most High God. And if God dwells in heaven and, and we're in the habitation of God, we have to be in heavenly places, folks. We have to be. And that of heaven is that that pertains to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is heavenly. He is heavenly. Not doing away with going to heaven. I'm not doing away with it at all. I believe in heaven. Absolutely. But I believe that we now dwell in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, just like Paul says. And that this heavenly place that we're dwelling in is made real in our hearts and our minds as he's revealed. Every time he's revealed, that is heavenly. Any measurement of him that has been made known in you is heavenly, not earthly, but heavenly, because he is heavenly. And when the heavens are open, we see visions of God. And Revelation 4, 1, I, I said I was going to read this earlier, says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it was a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you the things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. So John saw a throne set in heaven, but he was in the spirit. He saw this by the spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So what he's declaring is spiritual. And another place that sounds a whole lot like this is John 16. When Jesus says, of himself that the Holy Spirit shall show you things to come. If you read John 16, verses 12 through 15, Jesus said he had much to say to them, but they could not bear it yet. But when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you into the truth. He shall testify me. He shall declare me. He shall show you me. He will show you things to come. He will glorify me. And I believe that's what it means. He shall show you things to come is the glorification of Christ, is the revealing of Christ, that what is coming when the spirit of truth is come, Jesus is saying he's going to testify. He's going to declare. He's going to show me. And when we see the heavenly vision of the Lord, that's what we see. We see the work of God that was done in Christ, and we see our union with him. We see that we're united with him in his death, we're buried with him in his burial, and we're raised with him in his resurrection, and we're seated with him in his glory. It's all his. It's all his. But you and I are seeing that of him, that we be transformed to the same image that he is. That out of our bellies would be living water. That out of our soul would come forth that of God. That out of our mouth would come forth that of God. That is this vessel of God, we would give that of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I tell you, John 16 is so powerful, folks, what is being said there. He shall glorify me. Jesus says in John 17 that he's going to be glorified in them. And in John 16, he's telling you that the Holy Spirit's going to glorify him. He's going to glorify him in a people. He's going to reveal him in a people. Jesus says... I go away and the world seeth me no more, but you see me. And Judas said, how? This is recorded John 14. And, he, and it's by the Spirit. He said, I'll manifest myself to you, not to the world. How, Jesus? My Father and I shall come and make our abode with you. He's going to dwell with you. 
He's going to be made known. What he is is going to be declared in you. And again, what he is is heavenly. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So every time we see him, we're seeing that of heaven. And when that of heaven becomes made real in us, that of Christ, then that of heaven is real. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. It takes us out of the earthy at that of Adam. See, let me give you an example. In Adam, I'm unrighteous. In the natural man, when I say Adam in the natural man, I'm unrighteous. If my heart is in Adam, it's unrighteous. It's filthy. It's, it's lost. But when my heart is translated into Christ, if my soul has moved from Adam into Christ, now I'm seeing that of Christ. And that of Christ is telling me that I am righteous, that I am holy, that I've been made clean. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And see, that of Adam is earthy. That of Christ is heavenly. Glory to the Lamb of God. In Hebrews 9, it says that the blood of Christ purified the heavenly things. Well, that wasn't talking about the natural lampstands. That wasn't talking about the natural furniture. I believe that's talking about the believers. That's what he purified. He purified you and me that we could bear the image of the heavenly. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4, let me read this to you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we receive mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing and whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord and ourselves as your bond servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let's, God who said, light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has shown in our hearts. If I understand this right, he's saying God has shown in our hearts light to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from man. So in our hearts, this light, Paul saw a light from heaven, the light from heaven, who is Christ. I am the light of the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. The door in heaven opens and we see that of the spirit. The light is shining and we see that of God. And this light is shining in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of God's glory, not man's glory, not even the glory of the first covenant, but the glory of the Lord that never goes away. And 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the chapter right before tells us that we behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord. It says, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror or a glass, the King James says, a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed, changed, as we behold. Paul says we shall, we bore the image of the earthy, we shall bear 
the image of the heavenly. We bear that image by the Spirit of God the holding in a glass the glory of the Lord. And we see the glory of the Lord in the face of Jesus Christ, in the revealing of Jesus Christ. It says we're transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Just as from the Lord, the Spirit. So we're transformed from the glory of the first to the glory of the second. I used to, for a little while, kind of think that was saying glory to glory to glory to glory. Don't think that's what he's really saying, because if you read all of 2 Corinthians 3, it speaks of the glory of the first covenant, and it speaks of the glory of the second covenant. And we move out from the first covenant. We're not in the first covenant. We're in the new covenant that's in the blood of Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ is declared in that the Spirit is declaring Jesus Christ. It's what he's doing. The Spirit of God is declaring to us what Christ has done. And we, as we comprehend it, are coming to live in what Christ has done. Just like I said a few moments ago, before Jesus come, Paul writes to the Romans that all had sinned. So Paul says, every man's a sinner. And he's speaking before Christ came. He says that in Adam, every man died. Even those walking on the earth, even those breathing oxygen, don't have the life of God unless Christ is in them. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. But, in the declaration of Jesus Christ, see, in the, in the first covenant, it showed every man was exceedingly simple. Every man. Every man was bound in sin. Every man was a sinner. Every man was in the man of sin. But Jesus come and delivered us from it. In his death, he took us to the cross with him. We died with him. We died to everything in the first covenant. We died to it. We were buried with him. That means put away. It's all put away in the burial. When you bury someone in the natural, they're put away. But Jesus rose from the dead. So he rose out from that man, that mankind, that man of sin. And when we receive him, we receive him. We receive his death. We receive his burial. And we receive his resurrection. So Paul says we are quickened with him. We are raised with him. We are seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so this is what the Spirit of God is declaring to us. It's declaring Christ. That's what the word that's coming out of the Spirit is, is Christ and him crucified. You know, I used to quote the scripture out of Revelation that, that says something like, we got to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. And I used to quote that in a way to try to bring condemnation up on people and tell people they're not living right. But I myself at that time really wasn't hearing what the Spirit of God said because what the Spirit of God was declaring is Jesus Christ. He shall take of me and show me unto you, Jesus is saying in John 16. He shall take that of mine, all things of the fathers are mine, and he shall declare that of mine to you. And that's what the Spirit of God does. He's taking, so if I hear what he says, if I hear that voice, then I'm called up, glory to God, ascending up on the Son of Man into that of heaven out of that of the earth, and then that of heaven, the kingdom of God, like I said, the ki thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, that of the kingdom comes forth in our earthen vessel. 
Hallelujah. So that of heaven comes forth in us. That of Christ Jesus comes forth in us. That's what John saw in heaven. He saw a throne in heaven, and eventually he sees the Lamb in the midst of the throne. Glory to God. And the Lamb having the sevenfold Spirit of God, the seven spirits of God sent forth in all the earth, that, are de that Spirit that's declaring Him, the Holy Spirit, that's showing Him. That is the Spirit of Christ. Glory to the Lamb of the living God. This is our salvation. This is what Jesus is the door to, is the seeing of that that will transform our hearts. I'm telling you, it will transform. He, it's not it, it's he will transform our hearts and our minds that we live in the righteousness of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of the living God. Not through my works, not through your works, but through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have nothing to declare to you but him. And I, I'll be honest with you, I am in love with him. Jesus is my life. I feast in the word of the Lord. Glory to God. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to share the door, the door of heaven. And we ask that hearts and minds be open to you, to see you, to hear of you, to know you. Father, we just believe that there are many that's going to receive and they're going to see and hear and know by the Spirit of God. And we just thank you for it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I pray you join us again next week. And may God just richly, richly bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.